one of the things about angels is they always lead to this encounter with God. They kind of like bridge the gap, so to speak, between God and humanity. They're these real messengers from above. And when we read sacred scripture, we notice that the angels always lead people into this encounter. And one of the things we see in the Old Testament is Ezekiel's led to the temple by an angel. And then he has this real vision. And then also in the New Testament, we realize Cornelius is led into the church by an angel. And if you've ever seen the movie, It's a Wonderful Life, we realize that this guy, George, he's falling into despair and he's, he's closing in on himself and his problems. And he doesn't see the big picture of how important he is in this life. He doesn't see all the gifts and talents which he's received and which all the people in the community benefited from. And the angel helps him to see this in a real way. It's a beautiful movie about how angels really act in the world. And in today's gospel, we notice that Mary did not give the name Jesus to the child. Rather, it was an angel that gave the name to the child. And this draws us up into this real holy mystery where I realize the name of Jesus has this direct divine connection. There's a good song called, What a Beautiful Name. And the song draws you into this real encounter with Jesus simply by speaking this most sacred name that was given by an angel. A name given which united God with human flesh. The real radical truth of the incarnation. There's a beautiful line in the breviary which says, He remains what he was and becomes what he was not. Yet each nature stays distinct and forever undivided. And when we listen to the song in a soft and gentle way, it brings out the beauty of this name. It begins with the words, You are the word at the beginning, one with God, the Lord, the Most High, your hidden glory in creation, now revealed in you, our Christ. And I love that last line, now revealed in you, our Christ. In this way, in Christ, God's divine love and mercy took on a human face. And perhaps this is why the church today gives us the readings from the Old Testament on how they used to bless the Israelites. The priest in the Old Covenant used to bless the Israelites in these words. The Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you kindly and give you peace. And this is exactly what Christ did when he encountered the apostles and other people in his life. For St. John gives us these very words. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked upon, and what we have touched with our hands concerning the word of life. And it is our faith which is based on the apostles' testimony and all the early Christians who saw and walked with Christ. And also it is the Holy Spirit that descends upon our hearts which testifies to the truth of revelation the real revelation of the Incarnation. And it's in this way where there's this certainty that strikes deep down to our bones that this Jesus has the power to save our soul from death, that this Jesus has the power to forgive my sins, that in the name of Jesus there's a certain sacred sanctifying power. This is why the song continues. You have no rival. You have no equal. Now and forever, God, you reign. What a powerful name it is. This is why the church takes the name of God seriously and why we should never take it in vain because it has the power to sanctify 
and save all who call upon Jesus Christ in sincerity and truth, and seek to do his will to the best of their ability in this life. 